Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Justin Fields, this time a Steeler, preseason 2024, week one, locked in. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you're interested in that, hop over, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Justin Fields, new uniform, the Steelers. Right out the gate here. 12 personnel, little play action screen. Really nice kind of funky arm angle from Fields. Get this thing off. I love the kind of arm angle, the creativity, the ability to make a play. You know, he looks quick with the motion here. Whoop. Quick little flip. Nice feel for the game. Good job getting a completion. Really like the early play call here. Play action. Go big. 12 personnel and come hit him with a play action screen. Now, what I don't love is the right tackle losing so quickly. So, whew, right into your lap. But what a great job from Fields here. Play action. Set the pocket and then drift. He doesn't even really drift. He just bounces back because the guy's right in his lap already. Throws a beautiful screen flick. Allows that yak after we make the first guy miss. Now, technique-wise here, and I'm talking about right tackle. So, O-line school here for you gurus. Normally, I'm used to calling this a slingshot technique where you want to do whatever your verbiage is to drive, pass, set, kick, whatever you want to do. I'm thinking usually two on a screen, like a normal time screen. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to lose inside. You want to invite the outside pass rush. But you don't want to invite the outside tight pass rush. You want to make this thing go the long way. So kind of way out here. And when you kind of kick, kick, or drive, drive, set, 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 with some depth and width at tackle and invite that guy past you, once he gets past you far back there, then you want to take your inside hand, put it on his back, and slingshot his ass around. So basically what you want to do quarterback-wise here is play fake, set the pocket, know that he's going to be slingshotted back there and buy enough time to put this thing kind of up and over. We always talk about the quarterback having the responsibility to deliver these backfield screens. But again, that's under the assumption that we're protecting people up front. So just lose a little fast at right tackle right there. That little quick inside dip. The dunk. Tight turn, but what a great job from Fields, right? Surprises him right in his lap. Almost face guarding him. Drop it underneath the defender's arm. Let your back make somebody miss. Get vertical, nice little chunk. Next one here, second and long. We're going to end up ripping a hitch down here to the bottom to your boy 14. I think it's a good decision. Ball comes out, throws a fastball. Makes the corner miss, gets up the field, nice little game. Those are the positive things. Now, let me first acknowledge we are not in the quarterback room. We do not, I do not know exactly what they're asking fields to do footwork wise here. For me, this comes out a tick late. And what I mean by that is normally I would say hitch from gun, I would want to one step it, meaning catch one step. Now, a lot of people okay, do two steps where it's catch, left, right. What you don't see a lot of is this where you catch, take a, hit that back foot, and then take a hitch. Okay, very rare to hitch in the quick game. So that, that's the part. I think if he just, if, he, if Fields just caught it, put his foot in the ground, and ripped it out here, this would be potentially an even better play. So just the, just, and, and this is really just a gentle way for me to say it, it's just a little slow. And I don't mean like the actual action. I just that this the whole play is a little slow. This to me is shock. Now it's an iteration of shock. Normally I think of shock as inside fade. This almost looks like a seam. So who knows what they're doing. They're probably running some sort of option on the backside here. With a must outside release go. I love the decision. It's open. The throw is good. We're being really picky. Really granular. Okay, deal with it. Catch. Watch the four. Catch throw. See that just wasted movement on the back end? 
And again, to me, I want the ball in the air before a hitch runner turns around. I don't see a C14. Now, 14's not doing a great job running this route. He's peaking early before his back foot, before his last foot hits. So he's peaking early. Justin's a tick late. It doesn't matter when the guy's so far off and he misses a tackle. Okay. All those things can be true. Just watch the footwork here. So catch, one step throw. Catch, hitch. And again, it's just one play. Okay. Don't freak out, but it is what it is. The film is the film. Still, nice job making somebody miss, getting vertical up the field, protect yourself on the boundary. Next one here, the first of two fumbles, ball on the ground, quarterback center exchange, just the fastest way to kill a drive besides a true turnover. Uh, I've got some thoughts here on these kind of drop snaps like this. The, the first one before we even get into it is look what this was going to be, big play action scissors up top. They end up coming back to it later, and Fields throws a dot to the seven or the corner. But right here, and again, okay, this is coming from uh, some experience with a lot of different teams, a lot of different centers, a lot of different camps. And I think I, at one point I did the math. I spent over a life, a year of my life in NFL training camps. Okay, that snap to me looks a little to the right. Okay, we're not there every day. I'm not there every day watching them do quarterback center exchange. I will tell you, it's not easy to get snaps from a bunch of different centers when you're not the guy, okay? You don't have the same kind of center all the time as the starter. Not easy. Just an, It's not an excuse. It's just anecdotally my experience. Now, the thing I will say, and this is just, I've never talked to anybody about this. This has just been my experience with bad snaps. When the quarterback gets the ball, so meaning that the cornerback, the quarterback is not bailing out of there early and the ball is kind of left there and the D lineman jump on it. If the ball is fumbled, so quarterback center exchange, ball on the ground, the quarterback is standing right there and he picks it up, to me, that is usually the center's fault, center's problem. Because the quarterback's not pulling out, he's not, momentum's not taking him anywhere, he just gets it. The ball just dropped. It's usually side to side or short. And that, that's been my experience. Now, this first one looks like it bounces right up to Justin. The next one, different story. Both of them bad drive killers. But when you're trying to uh, assign blame, that's just been my experience. If the quarterback gets it like this, it's almost always on the center. If the ball's bounce all over the place and the quarterback's falling out of there, it's usually on the quarterback for pulling out early. See if you can see just a little bit of the directional snap. And again, we're not going to watch all these snaps. It just stinks when this happens. You know, does it look like it's to the right? You know, maybe a little to the right. The other part about it is he's he's going to the they're both going to the right though, so as a quarterback you just kind of ride the momentum of the center. And obviously, got to be able to do that. One time is terrible, twice is not acceptable. Next one here, third and thirteen. No good place for third and thirteen. By the way, uh, we're going to run dagger down here to the bottom, deep out, seven circus come back up top, five step drop, not there, get the ball down. That's a veteran move. Yeah, I think he plays this play with good speed and tempo. Okay, it doesn't look as visually slow as it did in Chicago for me with Fields and his footwork. It looks like it times up. If anything, I would say it's almost fast to the perimeter guys. It's still not going to be the fastest drop in the league, but it, it looks better. It looks closer to normal, like not noticing a difference in the tempo of the drop. Concept wise here, just simple dagger. So clear, deep in. Okay, third and 13, catch quarters, some iteration of quarters, middle field open. Got that deep out or circus, whatever you want to call it on the other side. You could potentially throw it there if you love the matchup. But thinking that you're going to have this right here, good thought. Now, the problem here when you go seven step or seven person protection, so five, six, seven. You don't really have that immediate flat pull. So you've got to kind of get this check and then into the flat. So you don't you don't get the kind of second level of the defense distorted at all. It's also third and 13. So if they get any sort of depth right here, just check it down, punt, pin them down there, great. That's exactly what Fields does here. So watch the second level of that defense, the linebacker types. They're going to get depth. They're already deep right now. 
get depth, check it down. And again, you can see the tight end, right? Take the edge off the end, chip and out. You get double chip, right? Both sides. NFL pass pro specialty there. I just love the tempo here that Justin plays with the timing. One, two, three, four, five, hitch down. That quick. Great. And you might say, bro, you're really celebrating the check down. Well, to me, I, I think that that just looks decisive. Looks like a veteran guy, not forcing it down the field. The drop doesn't look slow as hell. It just looks like progress. Maybe small progress, but progress nonetheless. Decisive, get it out, ball down, good decision, field goal, or not field goal, field position, live to fight another day. Next one here, another fumbled snap. You know, get a little fortunate right here to get this one back. This time, I think it's the fullback type that gets on it. Kind of falls into him. Super lucky, fortunate. Again, cannot happen. The, the other thing I would add here is that, you know, maybe a little unlucky that the thing kind of gets kicked. And, you know, to me, just watching it, and I know this goes against my theory that I just shared with you guys, but it doesn't look like Justin's moving. You know, he doesn't look like he's jumping out of there early. So, you know, you just one of those things where the, these guys, you just have to solve it. You have to get it fixed. You have to practice it where it feels like it's just don't have to think about it every single play. Because those are just unacceptable at any level of football. Those will ruin a practice in the league, let alone a game. Oh, my God. See if we can watch that, the path of it again. I mean, again, to me, that looks a little right. But, I mean, only those guys know it. The other thing I will say, and this is just weird for me, is back in the day when you're under center, if we were running over here, a lot of teams would reverse out. And so when you reversed out, so that would mean that the center is stepping this way, trying to reach or go this way, and the quarterback is reversing out this way. That, to me, was a hell of a lot harder than center reaching this way, quarterback opening this way, because then you're kind of riding the same direction if that makes sense. Regardless, one of those things, you can come up with any type of excuse you want. At the end of the day, it's not good enough. Center quarterback, disaster, super lucky to get it back. Next one here, a little naked keeper to Justin's right. A few things here for me, you know, shoot, I think it was in a video yesterday, talked about this not being my favorite naked keeper, just with how they get to the flat with the number one receiver. Just feel like it's never really there. I don't love the fullback trying to cut here either. You know, all these things are more my issue than anything else. I think Justin Fields plays this thing as well as you can play it. Nothing there. Scramble, go get a positive play. So again, what I'm talking about design-wise here is this like lollygag flat, it's not for me. Okay, corner, not there. We're trying to chop the end, cut the end, don't really get a great cut. He ends up continuing to pursue us and basically force us out of bounds. The thing that, I'm going to, you know, tread lightly as people freak out when we start talking about effort police okay, and specifically this guy. And this is not the first time I think I've noticed this on film. This is just not full speed to me. I don't give a shit what you say, you know, earmuffs, whatever. It's a nice robot here from the linebacker type hunting him up. But I would want to see us running 100%. If he's going to sit there and robot us, let's dump underneath him and keep fighting. I, I just, to start here, I want I want you to watch this and you tell me in the comments what percent he's running. Just put a, put a number and a percentage and I'll know exactly what you're talking about. I, I don't, it's not 100. It looks like he's fucking jogging. It looks like a walkthrough. <laughs> I mean, that route is often called an over route. Like, get your ass over there. I just, and then it looks like he quits. So it looks like he's jogging and then he quits. I just, it's not my kind of vibe. I don't know, man. I, I would I would be all over that. That's just, I don't know. Man. I'm, I'm going to do it again and I'm just going to let it try to wash over me and hopefully try to unsee it, but I can't. Maybe we worry less about fixing our glove and more about running full speed over there and show up for your quarterback. La, 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 la. You got it, buddy. And it's not any better from the end zone. From the end zone, we can see the over. Usually you want these overs 
So the relationships, you understand, when you come out of these nakeds, most teams will say the over should be timed up with the quarterback. So as the quarterback gets to the hash, the over should be near the hash. Does that make sense? So as you're running, you're kind of aligned. You, you be the judge, man. The film doesn't lie. <laughs> I just, I don't care that 39 rotates and is looking at you like that. He doesn't know what the hell is going on. So, so right here, this is that robot technique where the linebackers will get fooled on a play fake. They'll turn and try to hunt up crossers. Well, even though he's turned and facing this way, we can still win. Set him up, come underneath him, give us a, th a lane to throw. In addition, look at the relationship. We're out here. We're way back here. Get the fuck out of here, man. You got to be kidding me, dog. <laughs> I mean, got to be kidding me. Look at him. Justin's still playing. <sighs> Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, pass protection, tempos, the best-selling courses, how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offense available for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those, check them out at the new Quarterback School website, thequbschool.com. Get over there, really cool interactive feature, ask me anything. Get all sorts of nuanced, detailed responses on your favorite football questions. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and four, right on cue. Still fixing our gloves. Run the wrong route. And I'm guessing he runs the wrong route just because the spacing is horrific down here for the two and the three. I, I, am, I have nothing nice to say. There's, there's no way you can play this if you're the quarterback here. You know, maybe you get it to the check down. One step, get it to the check down. You know, just a little bit faster. You know, right tackle. I'm not going to make this right tackle school, but to me here, he almost like resets inside. So set, keep the kickstand there. Great. You don't need to step inside with your left foot right there. Just keep getting depth. Be a presence for the right guard. Well, what I'm saying here, and again, fuck, this is go way off the rails. You can be a presence and have your left hand up, what I'm used to calling a kickstand. I don't think any offensive lineman calls it that, but I call it that. But you don't want to take your left foot here and step back in this way because then that creates the short edge here. So you want width and depth on these edges. You, it's not good enough to just have depth. and You sure as hell need one or the other. So just, the, just that little subtle kind of in move and now all of a sudden that edge is tighter. Now Justin can't get to the check down. And again, he could probably get to the check down faster. No check down. No check down. But again, the right tackle. We're not getting much of a chance here. Yo. And again, nothing nice to say about 14 right here. This, this is, first of all, it's not a route. I'm going to guess this is what most people call double stick. So must outside release go. Quick out, true stick. And on that quick out just means normally on most teams, you have to run out of it. So it's not good enough to come out and like run a stick. You have to run out of it because you've got the stick coming behind you. This, this, this spacing isn't good enough on, you know, the freshman field. Damn. Third down? Fix your gloves. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that would bail Justin out here is here is if he played that uh, this play just like C.J. Stroud played the first one, first completion in his, in his series, where he said no and flipped it back and found the other one on the other side. You know, maybe Justin could do that here. Damn. Sack. Bummer. But you can see how it's all connected. And again, I don't, I don't have anything nice to say about what's going on, what seemingly looks like is going on with 14 and the effort and the execution. Next one here, another screen to your boy 14 up top. Now, when he gets the ball in his hands, he's dynamic, no doubt about it. 
Great job making the first guy miss. Protect yourself on the boundary. Quarterback-wise here, again, Justin dropping it down. Arm angle, got to throw it around a guy. This is an interesting way to block this tunnel screen. I don't know if I've quite seen it done like this before. And what I mean by that is we're going to step down. We're going to block down. The guard is going to go first. And then the tackle is going to go more alley. And we're going to be essentially unblocked here. So as he comes up, we're going to fake toss this thing, turn to pitch, and there's a guy in our lap. So Justin kind of drops it down and around him. And I think that might take the ball where it goes because the throw, certainly you want it on your upfield shoulder. You don't want it to make the guy go backwards here. But the right guard, right tackle, an interesting way to do it. They essentially fold that thing. Most times you'll see the tackle go out and block the corner. You could also probably tell Justin, you know, if you wanted to, if he was comfortable to maybe keep retreating, not put your foot in the ground to do it. Almost makes it look like more awkward than it has to be. So fake toss, get depth, flip it on the run going backwards. Again, it's a comfort level thing for a lot of guys regardless. Okay. We can take all the shots we want at 14 for what he does when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. Dynamic player with the ball in his hands. Get the ball into his hands. Just, you know, better throw. Makes this a little bit tighter, better executed. From the back, though, you can see that fake. And then I would prefer to continue to retreat, especially to my right. But he gets that angle. You can see he has to almost throw it around the end. And that's why the ball takes him outside. Because this got a chance to be a big, big play. If you could hit it right up the numbers. Woo! Next one here, probably the best throw of the day for Justin Fields, a little play action, kind of sail route from the slot. We're going to get the deep flag from your boy 14, the number one down here to the bottom with the sail. Great route. Put that safety in a blender, and it's a dot of a throw. Beautiful job. Play action fake. A lot to like here. I think this is Justin at his best. Play action, driving the ball down the field. You know, this is a throw. I personally think he... He missed seeing a lot in Chicago, so it's nice and refreshing to see him come out here and rip this and see this. So concept-wise here for me, up, sell that post, and then snap out of it. I'm saying that it's paired with this kind of deep flag or pylon, and it ends up being just a layered flood concept. But this is a beautiful throw, wide side, outside the numbers, pushing the ball down the field, accurate. This is what we always wanted to see, y'all. Play fake. Set your feet, one hitch ish, throw it. Dot. Driving the ball across the field. Just outstanding job here. Extend the ball, flip around quickly. Get lined up to your target and throw a strike right upon his face. Again, I don't know why we're jumping and catching it with our chin, but right on him. Big, big chunk. Let's go. Next one here, second and six. He's going to throw a kind of spray speed out up top the ball is just not accurate enough the tempo of it is outstanding the accuracy i actually think he almost catches this thing too i didn't go back and watch the broadcast replay or not but i love the drop the core everything except the ball location i i think you know i feel like i've said this many times on the channel before but speed outs especially spray speed outs most teams in gun will have you do three no hitch. Again, I talk about this a lot on the channel. I personally prefer one shuffle. So a lot of people call it Brady shuffle, whatever you want. One three no hitch means three step drop, no hitch, hit your back foot, throw it. A shuffle to me was always a little bit better, felt more in rhythm. You take a shuffle, take a tight hitch, and it times out the same as three no hitch. And that's, this is exactly what he does here. The timing of this thing is perfect. Y'all, oh, I'm going to whisper it, okay? But it's there. This is real A. Now, it's not A accuracy, but it's A anticipation. We're getting close. We're getting warmer. Watch the shuffle. Hitch throw. That's a tight hitch. That's an outstanding base. That, there's a lot to like right there. Now, anticipation. Yep. He's throwing it right there, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's anticipation. Let's go. I'll just put it out on the sideline. Again, it's just on his back hip. 
just a little bit behind him. It's a bummer too because this would have been this would have been beautiful, man. Speed out outside the numbers, anticipation, everything except that final precision with the ball control, the accuracy. That's the difference, you know. So this is to me again good strides. Look, there's there's people right in his lap, can barely get through the throw. All his cleats in the ground, ripping that thing, and it's just you know too far inside off the plate. Whew, bummer. Last one here, sack. This is a bit of a bummer sack here. This is probably more coverage sack than anything. You know, could Justin potentially throw it to what I'm going to consider the number two on this read, the tight end? Probably. I mean, it would have to be a big-time anticipation throw. Now, we saw this also in the preseason already. Watch the running back. Running back in the center, pass off the stunt. Nice job by the center grabbing that too. So the center's turning to the right. He ends up taking the back's guy. The back picks up the center's guy. It's beautiful. That's outstanding. That's really nice. Now, <laughs> I got to be careful because people go get really sensey about wide receivers. And this guy, to me here, we're trying to get the ball to him. We want to sell this crosser. And I mean violence, like shot out of a cannon. Boom. Then snap back out of it. That's where the ball's probably designed to go. Okay. This probably never going to get the ball there. And then if 14's not there on that quick little in and out, you've got this crosser coming across. Now, all of those things, so this to this is what I think this is. Well, none of that matters if we're clamped up and we're clamped up. Like where the hell should he go with the ball? I'm saying maybe he could throw this with anticipation there. But you don't see a lot of like man-to-man -man anticipation throws. It's more like zone window throws for most quarterbacks. But watch watch 14 up top. You tell me, does that look like he's going to run across her? Does it look like he's going to run across? Uh, it doesn't to me. That's just way too easy. If you're going to slow it in there like that, you got to eject that guy with your right arm. Throw him and come out of it. Getting the tight end, maybe getting a little bit held. That's a bummer, though. And again, from the back, you can watch here as Justin looks to his right, not there, 14, not winning, back to the tight end. So he never really gets back to the tight end. Watch his helmet stripe. Right, not there. See him kind of skip over 88. I'm saying, no, you feel it coming, you feel it squeezing in on you, and you throw this thing right here. And you just trust that he's going to win and separate across. Again, clamped, clamped, okay. pocket collapsing on us, not good enough, sack. And we got sack, sack, sack. Damn. So that is a wrap. Justin Fields, the Steelers, I thought it looked pretty good and looked all right. You know, obviously the ball on the ground, unacceptable. Any level of football. It just straight up. And that really kind of like blankets the whole thing and puts a negative light on it, or you could put a negative light on it with that. I think if you peel that back, there were some positives. You can see, I think I can see some stride in his game as far as the tempo that he's playing with. Saw some anticipation. Saw some nice drive throws. Now, was it consistent, precise ball control, putting it exactly where he wants all the time? No. Was there some wasted movement in maybe some of the drops, the timing element of it? Yeah. Was he getting, you know, max effort help on the perimeter? No, I'm comfortable saying that too. You know, you put all those things together and it's probably a hodgepodge of a performance. But overall, I thought there were some, some slight steps in the right direction. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see if it's a real competition. We'll see what Russell looks like. All those things moving forward. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.